Hello beautiful children and parents, grandparents, and hero mentors. This is step one. The chapter one is about Fluffy and our concept for this week is being unique. So I'm going to read chapter one to you and then um, tell you my story if, if that's okay. So here we go. Fluffy face is a problem. And here's our beautiful illustration. Look at her thinking. So, Fluffy felt grumpy. She quit hopping and plopped herself down to tug on her ear. Why did we have to leave Bubble Burrow anyway? She knew the answer. Papa hated the salty seashore of Shining Sea. And Mama wanted to return to her country cousins, but that didn't make it any easier for Fluffy. Fluffy had friends back in Petunia Town, for she was a sociable bunny. But ever since she moved to this place, nothing was the same. All the bunnies in Bubble Burrow had color. Some had gray fur, some had brown, and some had lots of colors all mixed up. Fluffy thought they were beautiful. They thought she was different. Fluffy's one ear went up and the other ear went down. Her big eyes were blue instead of brown. Her fur was as light as a snowy day. Long arms made her hop in a very strange way. Some said she was a funny bunny. Mama tried to make her feel better and said she was pretty in her own unique way. But here in Bubble Burrow, she felt strange and out of place. It was a new feeling and not one she enjoyed. For Fluffy was a sociable bunny. She loved everything and every bunny, and she wanted them to like her, too. Fluffy's burrow was full of brother and sister bunnies who were loud and laughed and told exciting tales of adventures in other land and beyond. Fluffy was happy in her noisy home, but out in Bubble Burrow, she felt awkward and alone, for she had not yet found a friend of her own. The other bunnies in Bubble Burrow already had their circles of friends, and so far, Fluffy had not been invited in. And a little question began to sneak into her head. Might there be something wrong with me? And that dark little thought stung her heart like a bee. A single tear slid down her furry cheek. She quickly wiped it away with her paw and shook her head. No more bad thoughts today. For Fluffy knew that what she wanted more than anything in the whole wide world was to find a true friend with whom she could share great adventures, and she hoped it would happen soon. Have you ever thought that others were maybe more colorful or interesting than you? Have you ever let dark little thoughts put stings into your own heart? Think about what kind of a friend you are to yourself. So now we'll talk about being unique. Unique means that you're one of a kind, not like anyone else, special in your own way. Truly great friends try hard to avoid hurtful words or actions that cause pain in a tender heart and sting like bees. Fluffy was seen as different by the bunnies in Bubble Burrow. She felt out of place and she didn't like that feeling. It made her feel grumpy. Fluffy is learning that every bunny is unique and special, even herself. She just might discover that she has a lot to learn from her unique friends and that she has unique gifts to share with them too. We're all beautiful and special in our own unique ways and everyone deserves to be treated with love and respect, and every late relationship can help us grow. So, I was asking myself, how was I unique as a child, and how did I feel about my differences? And what have I learned about being unique and embracing my differences? So, I'll share my little story with you, and then you can share your stories with each other. When I was a little girl, I was never little enough. I was bigger than everybody else in my class, and I'm still pretty big. Um, I wore saddle shoes for a foot problem. 
not cute little penny loafers like my friends. And my skin was really pale, not beautiful and tan and brown like the other girls in my class. Comparing myself to others just made me feel inferior and sad. I stung my own heart by rejecting everything that made me unique. And then, one day somebody said, Ruth, you have the voice of an angel. And that prompted me to take voice lessons. And my teacher made me stand up tall so that my voice could flow out. And one day, somebody else said, wow, you are stately like a queen. And suddenly I saw my tallness and bigness in a whole new way. I could carry myself like royalty. And then, believe it or not, one day, somebody tapped me on the shoulder and said, are you a princess? Well, when I recovered from my shock, I said, well, if my heavenly father is a king, well, I guess that does make me a princess. And I felt even more unique and special in my own way. And then on TV, I watched Prince William marry Kate, and I watched her become a princess of beauty and of grace. And then watching the crown and learning about the queen, it taught me that true royalty involves serving others and the people of your kingdom. So I learned that noble character is really a rare treasure and it brings honor to those who build it into their lives. Eventually I learned that comparing myself to other people is an ugly trap because if somebody is better than me, I judge myself and I feel depressed. Or if I think, well, somebody's worse than me, then I become arrogant. I decided it's best not to compare myself with anybody at all. Just focus on being the best me that I can be in order to help others. So now I love being unique. I can serve the world with my big smile and sparkling eyes that say, I'm just so happy to see you. And that is my simple superpower. How about you? Do you have a story to share? God bless you and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.